I'm Dr. Matthew Fay, a GP with Affinity Care PCN in Bradford, trustee to Thrombosis UK and a clinical advisor to Anticoagulation UK. We know that many patients are finding they are being asked to change the nature of their anticoagulation at this time of national crisis. We have put together this short presentation to explain why this is happening and to hopefully allay some concerns and anxieties about what is going on. First, let us consider why you might be on an anticoagulant. There are various conditions that can lead to the need for an anticoagulant. All involve the risk of clots forming where they are not wanted and affecting the flow of blood, either as a direct consequence of the clot or due to the clot moving elsewhere in the body, such as to the lungs in a pulmonary embolism or to the brain to cause a stroke. There are various forms of anticoagulation which work in slightly different ways and need slightly different monitoring, but the end result is the same. That is that they reduce the blood's tendency to clot to reduce the risk of harm to the patient. A common anticoagulant is warfarin and this has been used by many people. Some are now finding they are being asked to change this medication for an alternative. We know that this is causing some anxiety about the effectiveness and the safety of the alternative. The drugs that are being used to replace it are collectively known as the DOOPs, a direct oral anticoagulant. These comprise of apixaban, dibigatran, doxaban and rivaroxaban. Some may have previously asked about these medications and been informed that there are issues in how effective they are and how safe they are. We shall look at this. The DOACs have been extensively studied over the past 15 years and have consistently been shown to be as at least as good as warfarin in both issues of thrombosis and AF. As these medications have a direct effect on the body's clotting system and don't work through a complex of other metabolic processes as warfarin does, they have a very consistent effect on the coagulation system and are unaffected by diet, medication or other illness. Of course, with all new medication we have to be concerned about the safety compared with the medication we are replacing. Again, the studies looking at the DOAX have considered bleeding, as this is an unwanted consequence of all anticoagulants, and have again found that they are as safe as warfarin. Some may have been told about a lack of a reversal agent, meaning these medications are clearly dangerous. The effect of a DOAC can be reversed when needed, and all hospitals will have protocols on how to deal with a patient in an emergency situation on a DOAC in a very similar way as they do for patients presenting on warfarin. But with this new medication, there seems to be a concern that we may not know how to use them. In the reality, the DOACs are not new medication and have been used in clinical practice in the NHS for over 15 years. There are areas of the country where DOACs make up more than 80% of all the anticoagulation medication used. Although the experience of an individual clinician is always variable, determined by their clinical specialties and personal interest, the collective experience of the NHS in using DOACs would be regarded as extensive. So why are we switching now? There has been no debate in the clinical community that DOACs are a safe and effective medication. However, some have had concerns about cost pressures to the NHS with their use, and this has reduced their overall usage nationally. In this time of crisis and lockdown, the stability of the dosing with the DOACs is a great asset. Unlike warfarin, where the anticoagulation effect can vary with your diet, general health and other medications, DOAC's anticoagulation effect is very consistent. Once the renal function has been assessed and the dose determined by the clinician, we know that a patient is safely anticoagulated without further need for testing while they remain adherent to their daily dose. This clearly has a big advantage as we no longer require the monitoring of the warfarin clinic to ensure that a person's current warfarin dose remains safe and effective. For this reason, many people on warfarin are now being asked to change to an alternative medication. 
Could everyone have a DOAC? The answer here is clearly no. There are some people where we just do not have the evidence that they are safe to use, such as in pregnancy or breastfeeding mothers, where we are yet to understand how they may affect the developing child or the newborn infant. If you have suffered a sensitivity or allergy to DOAC, then it would be inappropriate to give you the medication again. Some know that their warfarin was high range, that is, requiring an INR level greater than 3. And again, we do not have the evidence that DOACs can be effective in those conditions. People with antiphospholipid syndrome should also be kept on warfarin. As again, those with poor kidney function or on dialysis, where DOAC effect may be inconsistent. So in conclusion, we can say anticoagulation care is changing very quickly during COVID-19, with a now a rapid uptake of the DOAC medications, which have been used in the NHS for the past 15 years. Clinicians are making decisions on a patient-by-patient -patient basis to ensure that the transfer from warfarin to DOAC is as safe as possible. Clearly, if you have any concerns, you should contact your anticoagulation service or prescribing clinician. Further information can of course be found at Thrombosis UK and Anticoagulation UK. Thank you for your attention.